Hello, and welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic, um, where today we're going to take a look, look at a different sort of logic problem. Um, not a Sudoku, uh, not a crossword. Um, this is a puzzle that appeared in last weekend's uh, US Puzzle Championship, which is an online competition that uh, appears every year, and it's used to select at least, at least one member of the team who will represent the United States at the World Puzzle Championship. And uh, it's a superb uh, standard, therefore, and it contains a lot of interesting puzzles, all done under time pressure. And this is an example of a puzzle that, um, fair play to you if you looked at this puzzle and solved it quickly during the competition. Because, uh, well, on my first attempt at it, um, I basically had to use guessing and work my way up from the top of the puzzle, or the bottom of the puzzle to the top. Uh, and only on reflection, uh, did I understand that there is uh, there's actually a logical way of approaching this puzzle? I thought that's why it might be worthwhile to take a look at it uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, now you can see there hopefully the instructions on the screen. So it's a puzzle called Drop Area by John Bolton, um, worth 20 points, which is well, it's a fairly hard puzzle. That means in the context of this. Uh, this competition. I mean, it's sort of a 15-20 minute puzzle for very, very good solvers. Um, uh, well, perhaps slightly less than that for the very best solvers, but um, uh, well, so definitely do take a look at it and challenge yourself with a with a stopwatch if you if you if you think you might be competitive. What do you have to do? Well, you have to divide a grid that you can see an example of there. Uh, contains the, the digits one to nine into areas of equal of the size with a size equal to the number um, but such that each shape uh, is rotation symmetric so what does rotation symmetric means well it means if you rotate the shape around 180 degrees you need to get the same shape so the number doesn't need to be uh, symmetrically placed the number is ignored for the purposes of rotational symmetry but you can clearly see if you rotate this to 180 degrees, you just get the same shape, same with this eight, same with all of the shapes. That's the rule. Now, the only other slight quirk here is that um, the real puzzle, which I'll bring onto the screen now, uh, is for is larger. It's for the numbers 1 to 18, um, and not all the numbers are given. So if you study the grid quickly, you'll see that you won't find a number 4 there and a number 10 both of which they need to appear in your final solution, but you have to also discover the location of, of those shapes. And that doesn't make this puzzle any easier. Um, so, as I say, what I did when I first looked at this is I started with the one, which is not an unreasonable place, and then I looked at this cell and I tried to work out where I might be able to attach this to in a way that was rotation symmetric so I think I tried to link it to this 12 initially and um, uh, and that, that way madness lies and it took me a long time um, and as I say with these puzzles there normally is a clever way into the puzzle and it's if you can find that especially under time pressure that you can be a really great solver um, now and that's what I want to look at now. How could you go about solving this in a logical way or in a way that would give you a start enough that if you wanted to switch to pencil and eraser you could get it done in a reasonable amount of time? And there is a way. And the way it focuses um, on an interesting property regarding odd numbers in these sorts of puzzles. So if you have a rate rotation symmetric shape which is an odd number of cells then there must be a central cell in that shape which is uh, which operates if you like as the the center of symmetry There's, it's it's the cell around which everything must rotate so let's just take it as a look at this example this seven here you can see this cell here acts as the very center of the seven and about which everything can rotate same with this nine this cell here so it can sometimes be a good idea with rotational symmetry puzzles like this one to try and identify, especially for some of the bigger numbers, where that center of uh, rotation might be. And that's especially interesting with this number 13 here. And why is it interesting? Well, it's because this 13 is such a large number 
And you can see it's sort of been hemmed in here by the 9, 17 and the 14. So either the 13 will come out this way or it'll come out this way. And we need to think about whether one of those might be ruled out and if it's ruled out, what that then means. So right, I'm going to switch to Excel now because I've set one of these uh, grids up that we can take a look at and try and uh, work out how we might do it. So look, that's an easy one, but we can do the one there. So let's think about this 13 and think about where that center of symmetry might be. So we know it can't be too close to the 13. I mean, if you know, if the center of symmetry was here, for example, it's impossible to remotely create a shape that would rotate around this shape, be 13 cells large and wouldn't, uh, you know, once rotated, appear outside the grid somewhere. So we know the center of symmetry is going to be a fair number of squares away. So one thing to ask ourselves is, could it be over on the left-hand side? Could it be in this left-hand column? So what about this cell? Could this be the center or this one? Could this be the center of symmetry? And clearly it can't be, because if this 13, and it will be, this 13 square will definitely be part of the 13 shape. If we rotate it around this shape, we finish outside the grid. So nothing on this left-hand side, in this left-hand column, could act as a... Uh, as a point of rotational symmetry. Um, now, if that's the case, we should ask ourselves, well, how about, how about this sort of square here? And again, that's going to be very problematic. And we, bear in mind, we can't go too much further than this square because we need the, um, you know, the central point of, ro of rotation. It could only be a maximum of seven squares, if you like, from this 13. If this 13 was right at the very edge of the square, we could go one, I guess two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could go a maximum of another six squares from this center of load rotation. So this is the sort of limit if we come in this direction. But you can see if this is the center of rotation, because part of our shape has gone into the first column, when we rotate around this square, we're going to start hitting this 15. So let me just show you what I mean there. All this is part of the shape. And as we rotate around it, we're going to hit this 15. Now we know the 15 can't be part of the 13. So therefore, we know this square here isn't part of the, it isn't going to be the center of rotation about which we need to, to pivot our shape. So we're sort of starting to realize that the 13 is going to have to come out this way. And then we need to think about, okay, well, if it's coming out this way, what are the potential squares that could act as its center of rotation? And the first and most obvious thing to note is the center of rotation can't appear in this column um, or any, any other column to the right here, because if it did, again, when we rotate this square around the center of rotation that's in this column, we're finishing outside the grid. So we're starting to be quite limited. It looks like it's going to be one of these sorts of squares that we need to consider. Um, and again, we can very quickly start to rule out these squares. Just with a, once you get your mind around this, it becomes very obvious. So this square could never be a center of rotation because again, once you pivot this square, which must be part of the 13 shape around this, you're going to hit the 18. So this square isn't going to be our center of rotation. What about this square? For exactly the same reason this square couldn't be. Um, I mean, I guess the shape could, in theory, come out this way to avoid rotating around this square, but it's going to be, it's going to take too many squares to reach the center of rotation if it doesn't just come up directly like this. So again, this is too many squares now away from 13 to be the center of rotation. What about this square? Could this be, this? it just about could reach this point. But again, you can immediately see if this is the center of rotation, then as I rotate this square around this point, I'll hit 17. So this square isn't the center of rotation. So, so now we're starting to realize that this square is the only square that can act as the center of rotation. Now, if that's the case, how, how would 
this square and this square and this square. How will they rotate around this square? Well, that's, that means they're going to have to come out like this. So we're starting now, I'll label in red um, squares that we've identified as a center of rotation for their respective shapes. So we're starting to build up a pattern of what this 13 looks like. And now we can quickly, because, because we know this pattern here, we know this square can't be part of the 13. Because if this square is part of the 13, once we rotate it around its center of rotation, we'll hit the 9. So we can mark this with an X. Similarly, this square here allows us to mark this square um, with an X. Is it possible that the 13 extends over into column 1? Well, if it extends it over into column 1, this is going to, on this side, extend into column 9. And that's going to trap these squares into this area. Now we know that the missing numbers are 4 and 10, so in fact if we come this way you can never make a shape that's 4 or 10 or 14 in this area. So we know that it's not going to come quite this far. What else can we, can we deduce from this sort of logic? Well, we can immediately rule out anything in row 4. Anything in row 4 once reflected around this 13, we'll finish outside the grid. So we know we're, we're very limited in terms of we found nine squares of the 13. The other four squares have to come from the first three rows of the grid. Let's think about this square. Could that square be part of the, uh, the 13? So once we rotate it again, that's going to appear here. And I think the reason this gives us a problem is what's going on with this shape here, the shape that's not part of the 13. That's going to have to extend this way and out, out here, and it's going to have to reach another number. Now, it should be pretty obvious. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Even if it's going to the 18, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And you can't then it's impossible for this to rotate without hitting the 8 and this can't reach any other number and it can't be the 10 because if it was the 10 it wouldn't be a rotation symmetric shape so in fact this square is impossible so we can remove that remove the x as I just put in uh, what about this square? could this be in 13? let's have a look that would mean that that square has to be in 13. You can see that the 9 is now having to come out this way. And it's immediately obvious, again, once you start to think about what rotation symmetric shapes look like, it's impossible for this 9 to be rotation symmetric if it's coming out like this. It just can't be. So that square's out. So we're, we're really getting restricted now. In fact, there's only two squares left that are... Um, possible candidates, this one and this one. Now that being the case, these, this would be the shape of the 13. Now is this possible? Uh, well we know it has to be from the logic we've produced. We can see that it, it isolates these four squares here, but these four squares are rotation symmetric, so that's great because we know we're looking for four, so we can put these in. I'm going to do some highlighting now just to Let's um, highlight these just to make it clear what we're, what we're thinking. Okay, highlight this, these four squares as well. And all of a sudden, just this starting piece of logic, it doesn't finish the puzzle by any means, but it does make the problem surmountable. Uh, why do I say that? Well, we start to find other numbers being restricted now because this 9, this 9 we know has to come out. It's going to have to come to there. And this 17 needs to come out. So it's going to have to come to here. And now we start to uh, find lots of interesting things happening because how can this 9 develop? That's one of the questions we might want to think about. 
bear in mind it's an odd number, so there is going to be a central cell that's going to act as its rotation of symmetry again. And it's pretty clear, I think, that well, one option would be a straight line. Why is that not possible? Well, you can see this 17 is going to cut this 14 off. Because if, if, if this 9 really does extend like this, 17 is going to have to come into this area. And you can't, that 14 will then be too isolated. So that's not possible. So the 9 is going to have to turn this way. So again, we can now ask ourselves, okay, if it's coming this way, which cell could operate as a rotation of uh, a rotation of symmetry? Could it be this one? Could this be the central cell? Let's just think about what that would look like. But if it was, then there would have to be uh, four numbers to the left of it. That would mean either this one or this one would have to be part of the nine. Um, but also, this nine is would have to come down like this. I think you can see if, uh, if this square is in, then that's going to, the rotation will hit the 3, so that's not going to be possible. And if this square is in, then it's going to cut into the 13, so that's not possible. So this square can't be a centre of symmetry for the 9 shape. So we can that's very important because that allows us to know this isn't part of the 9, so this has to be part of the 17. And this square here, therefore, does have to be not only part of the 9, but the centre of symmetry for the 9, which allows us to actually complete the 9 shape. The 9 shape is therefore going to look like this. So all of this work we did in isolating the that 13 shape to begin with is having a uh, lot more consequences in terms of other numbers too, as, as we would expect. Um, now again, with this 17 here, we know this 17, if it comes this way, it's going to block off the 14, so it, it's definitely not going to do that. It's going to have to come out this way. Now that, which is interesting because this 18 now is starting to get extremely penned in, let's call it that. One of the reasons it's getting penned in is because of this 3. We know this 3 is rotation symmetric, so it'll have again, it's got a centre of rotation, so it's, the 3 is either going to be a horizontal line or a vertical line. Now, if this is, if this is the shape of the 3, you can easily see this 18 is now blocked. So that's definitely not what's happening. This is going to be a vertical line. So this this square here will definitely be part of the 3. We don't know yet know whether it comes this way or this way, but this square is definitely part of it. And that has an implication for the 18, because now the 18 needs to escape somehow. This, you know, there aren't 18 cells in this little area. So this square here has got to be part of the 18. This, that's the only way this 18 can escape from the area it's being confined to. Now, if this square is part of the 18, now look at the 17. Again, we know the 17 has to escape. So the 17 is going to have to come like this, which is going to have to push the 18 out like this as well. So all this is being driven from this stuff. You know, if we'd been able to spot what was going on with the 13 straight away, actually filling the grid from there becomes not easy, but manageable. And that's one of the lovely things about these complex logic problems, is once you have the right idea, you can, uh, you can make progress with them at a reasonable rate. Now, I don't want this video to be too long. It's already getting up towards 20 minutes. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably now work through the rest of the puzzle as I see it um, logically and um, you know, play that along to speed rather than showing you how, you how I'm deducing every step. Certainly what we've done so far is exactly how you need to think about going about the solution to one of these puzzles. I hope it's proved interesting. Um, as I say, we like doing different sorts of puzzles, both Mark and I are puzzle nuts. So, you'll see puzzles like this from time to time on the channel. So what I'm thinking in terms of how to develop the solution is how does this 14 need to go? Well, 14 
there aren't 14 squares again in this little area so it's going to have to start coming out this way and therefore this square these squares are all going to have to connect to the 14 and we need to think how we can make a rotation of this symmetric shape which is 14 cells large that doesn't cut this 15 off because as soon as this, if this 14 comes out into column 3 it's going to break the 15 so if we know the 14 is only contained within the first two columns how could we make a rotation symmetric shape? Well, I think there's only one way. And um, that's if it's this sort of shape. Um, that's going to work, I think, if it's rotation symmetric. Anyway, we'll go on from there. Thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting. And we'll be back on the Sudoku and the crossword soon for those of you who don't like this sort of thing. Uh, if you do like it, please do subscribe to the channel and leave comments. And um, we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.